Are you tirelessly pumping iron in the gym, but find yourself tangled in a web of endless, contradicting fitness advice? The quest to build muscle seems like a journey through a labyrinth of do's and don'ts, with every turn presenting a new expert claiming to hold the key to your success. Amidst this sea of information, one crucial element frequently emerges at the heart of the debate. How many reps should you do to build muscle? You've heard the debates and perhaps even changed your workout regimen more times than you can count. Some swear by the mantra, lift heavy low reps, while others preach the gospel of lighter weights, higher reps. But what if I told you that the secret to unlocking your full potential isn't confined to just one of these realms? In this video, we'll unravel the enigma of optimal rep ranges backed by cold, hard science. Stay tuned as we explore the truth behind the optimal number of reps and why certain ranges are better than others. The importance of reps. Before we dive headfirst into data, let's get back to basics. In the most simplest terms, reps are the amount of times that an exercise is repeated. Let's take bicep curls for example. Every time you lift the weight and then lower it, you've completed one rep. It's the fundamental rhythm of resistance training and the backbone to muscle growth and adaptation. But why do reps matter in the grand scheme of building muscle? Well, reps are the vehicle through which we apply stress to our muscles, instigating a cascade of biological responses that lead to muscle growth and adaptation. Whether you're lifting a barbell for 3 reps or 30, you're initiating processes within your muscles that are critical for hypertrophy. The science behind rep ranges. How many reps should you be doing? It's a question that sparked endless debate, and to be honest the answer is, it depends. But I'll explain. If we look at the typical loading recommendations, you will typically find that this concept is based upon the belief that the ideal number of reps exist on a spectrum or continuum, so to speak, that defines the relationship between weight, reps, and training outcomes. The beliefs promoted by this continuum suggest that combining a low rep scheme, typically within a range of 1 to 5 reps with heavy loads, optimizes strength development. On the other end, it was suggested that a high rep scheme, typically above 15 reps and combined with a lighter load optimized muscular endurance. But what about muscle growth? Well, the general consensus indicates that the so-called best way to build muscle is within a moderate rep range of 6 to 15 reps, also known as the hypertrophy range if you want to get technical. You may see this range vary depending on what literature you read, but for the purposes of this video, we're sticking with the 6 to 15 rep range. Now, some people have taken it to the extreme and suggested that any growth outside this range will be minimal. However, more recent studies have debunked this myth and have even validated that a wider rep range can actually promote muscle growth. In fact, a 2014 study compared a bodybuilding training style involving 3 sets of 10 reps with a powerlifting training style involving 7 sets of 3 reps. The routines had the same total amount of weight lifted, also known as volume load. Both routines resulted in similar muscle growth, however the powerlifting group saw a greater gain in strength as they lifted at a higher intensity. But in saying that, the powerlifting group demonstrated signs of fatigue, combined with aches and pains, which can ultimately lead to less muscle power. The results of this study have led people to believe that the volume of your workout is more important than rep ranges. Understanding Volume Loading Despite continuously being promoted as the so-called perfect rep range, there's not a whole lot of research to back up the hypertrophy range as being the peak for muscle growth. In fact, the research has indicated that there is no clear physiological hypertrophy advantage to any specific rep range. Research has also emphasized that increases in muscular hypertrophy occurred where there was observed to be an increase in volume loading. Volume is calculated by multiplying the amount of weight lifted with the number of sets and reps performed for any given exercise. However, the research has noted negative outcomes where the volume load accumulated too quickly. A 2016 study compared measures of strength and hypertrophy against two different rep ranges, being a heavy load of 2 to 4 reps and a moderate load of 8 to 12 reps. The subjects were resistance trained men who performed 3 sets of 7 exercises. Overall, muscle growth was found to be superior in the moderate group, while strength gains were greater in the heavy group, consistent with previous evidence. However, a limitation to this study was that volume load was more than double in the moderate group than that of the heavy group. This could seemingly explain the gains in muscle growth seen with moderate load training. But what about circumstances where the volume load is equal? Well, a 2017 meta-analysis compared the effects of light loads, or less than 60% of one rep maximum, versus heavy loads, or greater than 60% one rep max. The results demonstrated similar hypertrophy gains in both heavy and light loads, but muscle growth was only equal if sets were taken to near absolute failure. 
This has been backed up by studies which noted that muscle activation was lacking during high rep ranges as the body was not able to sense that these fibers were needed. This suggests that perhaps proximity to failure and total number of sets were better predictors for hypertrophy compared to the number of reps performed. This data has been replicated through various clinical trials. A further 2020 meta-analysis found no significant difference between low load and high load resistance training on hypertrophy in type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. However, this study suggested that future research is needed to determine the true effect in the population. While the results of these studies might make you think that rep ranges aren't that important, there are plenty of reasons why a wider rep range could benefit your training. Practical considerations. As evidenced by the studies previously mentioned, there are some benefits from using low reps and high reps from time to time. High reps theoretically train slow twitch, type 1 muscle fibers, while low reps emphasize the fast twitch type 2 fibers. So to see complete development in your training, it might be worth adding low and high rep sets within your workout. However, more research is required on this aspect of training and its effect on muscle activation. But let's take a look at things practically. It wouldn't make sense for a beginner to complete very heavy reps with limited training experience. Additionally, it makes even less sense for an individual to perform rep ranges that makes them feel physically sick. So when planning your workout, it's important to consider various factors when performing different rep ranges. In the case for low reps, these should be used more so in compound movements, aiming to increase your strength and ensure progressive overload. However, these can be both physically and mentally taxing and your technique may begin to break down, leading to an increased risk of injury. On the other hand, high reps should be used for isolation or unilateral exercises but must be taken close to failure if you want to see any sort of gains. The downside to using high reps is that they don't do much for increasing strength and from a practical standpoint this makes a lot of sense. However a 2018 study has suggested that there is probably a bottom end when it comes to the hypertrophy range. The study employed unilateral training using bicep curls and knee extensions in which subjects trained one arm and one leg at 20% of one rep max and one arm and leg trained with either 40%, 60% or 80% of one rep max. The results demonstrated that biceps and quad hypertrophy were basically identical with 40%, 60% and 80% of 1 rep max. However, growth was halved with 20% of 1 rep max. So what is ultimately the best rep range for growth? Well, the evidence doesn't really specify a particular rep range as research has shown that you can build muscle within a rep range as low as 3 reps and as high as 30. However, many gym goers still stand by the hypertrophy range as being the best for growth, not only because you get to feel the muscle and ensure progressive overload, but this range is generally manageable for those looking to maintain proper form while getting close to failure and without injuring yourself in the process. Based on personal experience in the literature, I would recommend focusing on the 6 to 15 rep range for a majority of your workout while focusing on a combined 20 to 25% of your training with low and high rep training. That way you can also build up your strength and endurance, not just your muscle gains. So regardless of the rep range you decide, the intensity of your workouts and total number of sets is what drives growth. By the way, there is a specific number of sets you should do to maximize those gains. But that's a story for another day. Thirsty for more fitness knowledge? Dive into these two epic videos right here, each a treasure trove of fitness wisdom waiting to be your next game changer. Until next time, keep striving for those gains, and I'll catch you in the next one.